Welcome back. And now for the news in detail, we start with Israel, which has launched fresh military strikes in Gaza, breaking a ceasefire agreed yesterday. Medics say Israeli forces have killed 36 Palestinians in air and artillery strikes on Gaza this week. Israel claims its attacks are a response to rockets fired by Palestinian militants. The situation escalated after Israel killed Al-Quds Brigade Commander Baha Abu al Atta in an airstrike. Since then, Israeli raids and artillery barrages have killed 36 Palestinians, including a family of eight. Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Shatai says Israel is using the escalation to solve its own political problems. He said Palestinian blood is being used as an electoral card. The U.S. Congress Commission for Religious Freedom has called on India to stop violating the rights of Kashmiris and end the communications blackout in the occupied valley. Chairman of the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission, Jim McGowan, has asked India to allow foreign journalists into occupied Kashmir. In a hearing in Washington, Commissioner Anu Rima Bhargava said freedoms of Muslim communities are being curtailed by the Indian government. Bhargava said the BJP government is promoting an ideology that suggests only a Hindu can be an Indian citizen. She said political and community leaders consider India's religious minorities as either subordinate or alien. The U.S. Congressional Commissioner said India is denying health care to millions of people under lockdown in Occupied Valley. A man has died in Hong Kong during clashes between government supporters and the protesters. Officials claim the 70-year-old was hit by a brick thrown by masked rioters. In London, Justice Secretary Theresa Sheng was hurt after being jostled by the protesters. China has strongly condemned both the incidents and called for thorough investigations. Speaking in Brasilia, China's President Xi Jinping said the one country and two systems mechanism is being challenged. She said restoration of order and an end to violence in Hong Kong is urgently needed. He reiterated Beijing's support for embattled Hong Kong chief executive Carrie Lam. The United States has asked South Korea to pay a greater share of the cost for the American forces deployed for its defense. U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper met his South Korean counterpart Jean Kyung Do in Seoul. Talking to media afterwards, Asper said it is crucial for Washington and Seoul to reach an agreement on cost sharing for the U.S. troops. This is a very strong alliance we have, but uh, Korea is a wealthy country and could and should pay more to help offset the cost of defense. The only ones who benefit from expiration of Jasomia and continued friction between Seoul and Tokyo are Pyongyang and Beijing. Jong said he and Asper shared the view that the cost-sharing pact should be fair and mutually agreeable, but he said it is unclear if they share any sense of what a fair amount might be. Now moving on to North Korea, which has refused a U.S. offer of fresh denuclearization talks in December. Pyongyang says it is not interested in more discussions aiming at appeasing us. Negotiations with Pyongyang have been stalled since a failed summit in Vietnam in February. Washington and North Korea's nuclear negotiators met last month in Sweden to restart the process. But the meeting ended without any result. The North's nuclear envoy, Kim Myong-gil, said the U.S. side failed to present a new approach. North Korea has been looking to have punishing sanctions lifted. Washington insists Kim Jong-un must dismantle his nuclear weapons program first. In Geneva, U.S. and Russian officials have met for talks on the new Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. The U.S. State Department says officials from both the countries met to discuss matters related to implementing the treaty. The new start is the only surviving nuclear treaty between the U.S. and Russia following the scrapping of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Agreement in August. Last week, the U.S. repeated its desire for a new multilateral nuclear arms control deal with Russia and China. China says it has no interest in such an agreement. 
Russia has called for an end to the U.S. military's occupation of oil fields in northern Syria. Addressing the U.N. Security Council, Russia's permanent representative, Dmitry Polyansky, accused the U.S. of looting Syria. Polyansky said the return of Syria's oil reserves to government control would provide urgently needed humanitarian assistance to ordinary people. In the meantime, President Vladimir Putin told the BRICS summit in Brasilia that Russia has met its military objectives in Syria. Putin claimed Russia has liberated Syria from terrorists and returned it to the legitimate government. He said the U.S. had made little progress in Syria before the arrival of Russian forces. In the U.S., two people have been killed and seven wounded after a shooter opened fire at a high school in the North Californian city of Santa Clarita. The details are in this report. Los Angeles Sheriff's Office Captain Kent Wedgner said the shooter saved the last bullet for himself with the intention of killing himself on his 16th birthday. Wedgner said the entire incident was recorded by closed-circuit cameras. Detectives have reviewed the video at the scene, which clearly show the su subject in the quad withdraw a handgun from his backpack, shoot and wound five people, and then shoot himself in the head. There are no other subjects who are outstanding as part of this incident or who took part in this assault. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence condemned the shooting. He said the President Donald Trump and his administration will remain resolved to bring the scourge of mass shootings to an end. In this nation, we mourn with those who mourn and we grieve with those who grieve. And to the families of those who lost loved ones and to those who are critically injured. The latest fatal incident in Southern California is similar to many other mass shootings at U.S. schools. Bolivia's interim government and members of the party of ex-president Evo Morales have struck a deal to hold new elections. Senate President Monica Murga, a member of the Morales' MAS party, said the agreement was made to defend Bolivian democracy. Murga called on Bolivia's security forces to treat the country's indigenous groups with respect. Commenting on the development, Bolivia's interim president Janine Anes said she wants to mend bridges with Morales's party, but she said the exiled ex-president Morales will not be welcomed as a candidate for the presidency. Meanwhile, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has sent a proposal uh, and a personal envoy to Bolivia to offer the world body support for a peaceful solution. 118 Rohingya refugees have been rescued off the southern coast of Bangladesh after their wooden boat sank. In a statement, Bangladesh Coast Guard says the refugees were attempting to migrate to Malaysia. The Coast Guard said the engine of the boat broke down off St. Martin's Island in the Bay of Bengal. They say they arrived on the scene as the boat began to sink and rescued the people on board. In Serbia, a huge boom in Chinese tourists to the Balkan states is providing a welcome source of cash to locals. A wedding extravaganza in a small picturesque village has been putting, pulling in the Chinese in particular for two years. This report has the details. <laughs> Peals of laughter erupted as Chinese tourists were led through a series of rural traditions in Serbia's holiday village of Gostol Jubilee. The women were given traditional white aprons, while men, donned in boat-shaped peasant caps, were cast in wedding rolls. The guests were then drawn into a traditional circular kolo dance. They will also have a chance to understand what kind of wedding is going there. And they can see a lot of the traditional clothes wearing on themselves. And Lured by visa-free travel and low costs in comparison to Western Europe, the Chinese have been coming to Serbia in droves. I think that they are finally realizing that Serbia and Balkan uh, has something nice to offer and something that is completely different that, uh, than they already seen. The growing tourism industry is proving very lucrative for Serbia. 
Last year, it earned 1.5 billion euros, contributing more than 3% to its GDP. China has completed a crucial landing test in the northern Hebei province ahead of a historic unmanned mission to Mars in 2020. The China National Space Administration says the mission is a conduct global and comprehensive exploration of Mars. More on the Red Planet in this report. The Mars lander underwent a hovering and obstacle avoidance test at a sprawling site littered with small rocks. The experiment simulated the uneven terrain on Mars and verified the craft's design accuracy. Today's test verified the procedures, including the lander's separation with the main body of the spacecraft, and then searching for a safe landing spot. <laughs> Researchers claim the test was a success. They say the rocket launch system called Long March 5 will take seven months to reach Mars and seven minutes to land. The testing facility comprises three parts, a task structure, a servo system, and a Martian surface simulation area. China is not the only country planning to go to Mars next year. Russia, the US, and the UAE all have their plans to race to the Red Planet. More stories to follow right after a short break. Stay tuned with the listeners. Lows and the highs of the business world now. Russia says it is opposed to rolling over existing oil production quotas set in agreement with OPEC. Saudi Arabia is expected to push for the rollover when OPEC oil ministers meet their Russian counterpart in Vienna early next month. Speaking at the BRICS summit in Brasilia, President Vladimir Putin said Saudi Arabia has taken a tough stance in oil production talks with Russia. The Russian president said uh, this is because of the forthcoming flotation of shares in Aramco. The Saudi state oil company has been valued at over 1.5 trillion US dollars. Putin said Russia should enhance its cooperation with OPEC beyond oil production. Since January, Russia and OPEC have slowed their output by over a million barrels a day to support prices. In July, OPEC and Russia agreed to maintain existing production levels until March 2020. E-commerce giant Alibaba has priced shares in its forthcoming secondary listing in Hong Kong at 24 US dollars. It says the initial public offering on the Hang Seng Index later this month could raise nearly billion dollars. Alibaba says it will issue 500 million new ordinary shares. Alongside this, it will also offer 75 million green shoe share options to the underwriters to help them to sell more than the target number of stocks. The e-tail giant says 12 and a half million shares will be reserved for retail investors. The retail shares will be priced at no more than 188 Hong Kong dollars, the equivalent of 24 US dollars. European stock markets are trading higher after White House comments suggested the US and China are close to a trade deal technology and trade sensitive mining stocks are fueling the gains. London's FTSE 100 has gained a quarter of a percent on trade deal optimism. The CAC 40 in Paris is trading nearly half a percent higher after Orange Telecom stocks gained two and a half percent. France's biggest telecoms operator is preparing to spin off its mobile towers and unit into a separate company. Frankfurt's DAX index has also gained a fraction after stock prices for semiconductor manufacturers Infineon, STM Microelectronics and ASML rose. In Asia, Tokyo's Nikkei 225 index closed over half a percent higher. The Shanghai Composite lost over half a percent after China's industrial production in October disappointed economists. Another weather situation from around the globe.
That's all for now with the latest updates. You can follow us on social media at Indus.news.